myself on Facebook. Well, occasionally <laughs> through the photos, rekindling memories of long lost high school friends, upward family reunions, and drunken college parties where I'm passed out in far too many inappropriate places. Then I come across the album holding images from the year I spent living in South Africa. A place where I fell in love with photography but struggled with the fine line between fully capturing my experience and exploiting someone else's suffering. Flash. There's a woman walking along a road made of rocks and red soil that leads right up to the brink of the horizon. A basin of water balancing on her head as if the wind were holding it steady, and a baby strapped so tightly to her back that she confuses his heartbeat for her own. Flash. There is a child playing bare-chested along the riverbank, slingshotting pebbles so high into the air that they become swallowed by the clouds, sun rays shining down on skin in the color of a 4.30 a.m. sky. Flash, there is me, a North Face backpack on my shoulder, flip-flops dangling beneath my feet, and a camera around my neck like a worldly white man's blimp, trying to encapsulate the essence of my experience in a mass of digitized pixels. I sit about 50 feet uphill from the river. Put the camera to my eyes and crack my world into a 2.5 by 3 inch existence. Watch his bloated belly buoy in and out of the water like a bottle someone forgot to put the message. And I can't help but feel that my actions parallel the past that once transpired on this very land. I am a 17th century European cop, staring at an African child, ready to pull out and light up my cannon. I am a 21st century American expat, staring at an African child. Ready to pull out and light up my can and see whether colonization or globalization, it feels like history has a tendency to repeat itself. That night, before I fall asleep beneath those flash bulbs bursting in the sky, I sit down with the near our fire. Amidst an orchestra of dancing embers that look like fireworks being born, I hand him the camera and he stares at the screen. Ask me what I'm going to do with the photo. Ask him when people see his pictures of us and help for his family and they say I'm supposed to be objective, that to resist the urge to become emotionally involved, but objectivity doesn't feed on your stomach, pretending something's not there doesn't make it go away, and what it like his image on my Facebook page won't help him live beyond the life expectancy that's one third of my own. <laughs> this camera has been used for everything, everything from exploitation to liberation, from oppression to revolution, from conveying the ecstasy in the eyes of a little girl as her father holds her in his arms to showing the fear on the face of a soldier right before the first time he pulls the trigger. And I just hope my heart can remain as focused as this camera. They say a picture's worth a thousand words, but I wonder what happens to words 1,001. Maybe it stays where it's taken. I mean, the pixels of a Facebook album caught somewhere between nostalgia and neglect, taken from the lens of a man simply trying not to be blinded by the power of his flash.